Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Me Praneet. In today's video, we are going to discuss July Visa Bulletin. Now, there's some bad news for EB3, and we kind of anticipated that from June Visa Bulletin because USCIS made it clear that the demand is high for EB3 India, and we have seen that repercussion in this July Visa Bulletin. Now, there are a few things that we'll cover in the today's Visa Bulletin. First, we'll go through the family-based category, see what changed. Then we'll move on to the employment-based. And then finally, we'll also look at the options. Now, generally speaking, people who are stuck in EB2 and EB3, this is the time they have to look for other options because the dates have retrogressed a lot. So we'll cover that in also in this video. So stay tuned and watch the video till the very end. Let's start with the family-based category first. So if you look at the charts on your screen, you will see that there is nothing much changed from the June visa bulletin to the July for family-based, except few changes here and there for Mexico. Now let's move on to the employment-based category. And if you look at the charts on your screen, you will see that nothing has changed for EB1 from June to July. Coming to EB2, nothing has changed. It remains uh, exactly the same. However, the major change has been seen in EB3. For EB3, if you look at the all uh, chargeability uh, areas, which is also known as Rho, rest of the world, we see that the rate dates have retrogressed by almost three months. Earlier it was 1st June 2022. Now it has moved to 1st February 2022. Now the bigger, biggest change is seen in India because earlier the date was 15th June 2012. Now it has retrogressed by almost three and a half years and now it's 1st Jan 2009. And this is a big change. Now, if you look again for Mexico and for Philippines, again, the dates have retrogressed by three months. Like earlier it was June 2022, now it has gone back to 1st Feb 2022. And now on your screen, you will see that there is a, a text which is appearing from this visa bulletin where USCIS clearly mentions that all the visa number available for EB3 India have been used and they see a robust demand for EB3 for India. And that is why they had to put this retrogression to make sure that there is uh, enough number of visas available for the next uh, fiscal year. So overall, it seems that they have applied, they have taken into account INA, which is Immigration Nationality Act 2002, uh, A5 and E into consideration. And that's why they have to put this priority date of 1 Jan, 1st Jan 2009. Now, few reasons that I think why this happened. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's my thinking, it could be completely wrong, but I thought that when EB2 starts to uh, started to retrogress, I think a lot of people from EB2 might have shifted to EB3, thereby increasing the load on EB3. And because there is almost no spillover from EB1 to EB2 to EB3, the, the, all the visas which are available for EB3 are almost taken up. And probably that is why EB3 has retrogressed by almost three and a half years. So the question comes, what are our options? If you look at EB2 for India, it is 2011 uh, Jan. And if you look at uh, EB3, it is 1st Jan 20, 2009. That itself tells that it will take a lot of time for it to become current if it ever becomes current. So the question comes, what are my next steps? And I think this is the right time for you to start thinking about EB1. At least try to see what are what exactly are the criteria, what evidence you have, and if there's any chance you can work towards some of these evidences or let's say criteria to make yourself eligible for EB1. And I am there to help you. I am there are a lot of people on LinkedIn you can reach out to who are running campaigns, running, running uh, trying, every, trying their very best to help people who are stuck in EB2 and EB3. So do reach out to them or reach out to me and I'm happy to help you figure out if EB1 is a possibility for you. One thing to be very clear, EB1 will not happen in a day. It'll take some time, it'll take some effort, but if you really focus your energy and uh, plan, make a plan of action, it can become possible. The second option is moving to any other country. Now, I've never talked about this, but I think this is one of the viable options if you think that your company would be able to move you to another country like Canada. And if you don't think it would be a hindrance in 
with the family, with the education of your children, or let's say any other reasons, and you can move freely out of this country, then that could be another thing you can think about moving to Canada, staying there and getting your PR if you're in Canada and maybe make, make a citizen if that is something you're wishing for, and then probably come back here on L1. And if you're a manager, if you come back here on L1, continue on L1 for one year and as, a, as an executive manager, and then try for EB1C. That is your second option. Again, it's a very personal choice. Um, uh, it completely depends on you, your family, and your uh, what exactly is at stake. But this is uh, an option that you can think about. The third option is moving back to your home country. Now, again, very personal choice. But if you look at the scenario, the dates are completely retrogressed and have been retrogressed. And I'm not sure if the government has any priority for immigration bills uh, to be uh, at least talked about or being passed. If something happens and if HR 1535 or some other bills that are pending come into action, then definitely, uh, for example, there's a bill that uh, talks about increasing the per country quota to 15% or completely removing it, then that could be a possibility and then that could really help for the dates to move. But uh, the way EB3 has retrogressed, I'm pretty sure there would be a lot of pressure on EB2 as well. So yeah, I think I would always suggest to try option one first, which is trying for EB1. If it doesn't work anyhow, then you have option two and three or probably just staying in the country and waiting for your turn. But a lot of people might have other problems like their children might be aging out and there are a lot of things which are uh, connected to your immigration. So yeah, make a plan, uh, think about it. It's the time to think. Uh, and if, it, if you're okay uh, waiting for your turn, then that's, there's no problem in that as well. But I wanted to discuss this. I wanted to put this out because this channel is all about honesty. It's all about putting the right uh, thought in front of you and particularly no BS. So yeah, this is what I think. And please feel free to let me know what you are thinking. Do you think that you would like to try for EB1? Or do you think that you want to move to Canada? Or you do, want, do you think do you want to move to India or stay in the country and wait for your turn? I'm hopeful I'll have my fingers crossed that someday a bill would come that would basically reduce this immigration backlog. And I think with the US making its strategies, the government might be thinking about uh, helping with immigration soon. So, but no one knows, only the government knows and they have their own priorities. But this was it. This was the video. I just wanted to quickly mention it that it is a, uh, a harsh retrogression in EB3 and probably coming to EB2 as well. So yeah, just wanted to put out, out there. Now, next video, you will start to see some features which I'm going to do for people who have done EB1. And I also wanted to put out that I'm starting a Slack group, a very private channel for EB1, where the whole idea is to help each other from experts who have done this, people who have already achieved EB1. I'm bringing people onto the Slack channel. I'm also uh, opening it to the public so that you can join. And uh, there would be very minimal fees, but the whole idea is that you uh, come there, you join, you, you learn from each other, you help each other and progress yourself to get, a, get out of this immigration hassle and try for EP1. And yeah, that's it. This is the video. I'll put the link in the description. So do check that out. And yeah, I'm looking forward to connecting more and more people and helping them uh, cross this hurdle. Till then, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon. Take care. Bye.